I like Sundered. I feel like I need to say that right at the start because I have a hunch this is gonna turn negative in a hurry. But before that happens, I want to begin by raving about the graphics, the smooth animation, and the massive world full of surprises. I also love the enemy designs and how non-linear the adventure is. And while I have quite a few complaints about this brand new action game, I'll be the first to tell you that I didn't want to put it down. Sundered is a good game, and I'll end up recommending it when all is said and done, but hang on, this is gonna be a bumpy ride. This is the story of Ash, a nomadic woman who finds herself sucked into a massive labyrinthian cavern after she accidentally stumbles across an ancient monument. It's here where our adventurer will need to fight for her life while uncovering the secrets of the ruined world. We'll need to track down and destroy a series of crystal shards, which we're told is the key to escaping this realm and defeating the evil forces that keep throwing monsters at you. It's not an especially original story, but it gets the job done. What we have here is a stylish 2D Metroidvania action game where we run around this massive world looking for upgrades and powers that'll allow Esh to dive deeper into the caverns. This starts out with a double jump before giving our hero a massive photon cannon, the ability to run up walls, and even a way to phase through the air. Fans of games like Symphony of the Night, Guacamelee, and Axiom Verge will definitely recognize a lot of the abilities in Sundered, as this generally sticks to the tried and true abilities you normally find in this type of genre. The good news is that Ash isn't completely helpless in this hostile world. She has a savage melee attack that rips through the enemies like a wrecking ball and a roll move that will keep her out of trouble. She'll also find glowing orbs of money from the fallen enemies and the hidden treasure chest that she can use to improve her stats and upgrade the various abilities. A neat touch is how when you die, you'll always return back to the Sanctuary, a tech tree with all kinds of improvements to spend money on. It's impossible to talk about Sundered without taking a moment to rave about the gorgeous hand-drawn graphics. Look, I was blown away from the opening moments and I love the look of Ash and the enemies she fights. In fact, some of the giant boss creatures are the best I've seen all year. And not just from 2D side-scrolling games, but from all games. There's some absolutely stunning stuff here you won't want to miss. And best of all, they save the best treats for the second half. I felt myself constantly wishing that more games could look like Sundered. Now, you would think that great graphics, a massive world to explore, and the best boss fights of the year would be enough to make this a contender for 2017's top prize. But Sunder has a problem. Actually, it has a lot of problems. Let's start with the load times, since that's the first sign something's wrong. I don't know if it's because the game is forced to construct a procedurally generated world or something else, but load times routinely run longer than 90 seconds. And it's not like you only sit there for a minute and a half on that initial load, because this happens every single time you die. That feels like an eternity when you're just sitting there watching the same boring hints fly by. These load times wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that you're constantly dying. Don't get me wrong, I don't think Sundered is necessarily difficult. I mean, the bosses are fairly straightforward and most of the enemies are pushovers. But the game does this one thing that makes advancing through the caverns more frustrating than fun. For whatever reason, Every enemy in this game has a bad habit of swarming Hash. Like, aggressively swarming. The kind of swarming that is almost impossible to shake, even when you run away. And when you kill six of them, a dozen more rush you from all sides. And they keep rushing, because apparently Sundered has an unlimited amount of bad guys to throw at you. Look, when it comes right down to it, I don't mind the game's difficulty. What I object to is the way the fights play out. I mean, it feels like the developers started with the idea of melee combat and something went seriously wrong. There really isn't much skill to finding different kinds of enemies because you can defeat all of them by simply mashing the square button. Almost all the enemies will try to stick on you like they're made of glue, which doesn't lead to an especially interesting fight. Instead of being exhilarating, I found that the fights were boring and monotonous, to the point where I actively avoided them after a while. And then there are the rampant technical problems that overshadow every other aspect of this game. Sunder is prone to crash. A lot. 
I had the game send me back to the PlayStation 4 dashboard close to two dozen times. Even after a last minute patch, I found the game crashing at inopportune times. The hell, it got to the point where it was even crashing at opportune times. Like, when the game was paused. Now here's the really sad part. The constant crashing isn't even the worst of it. The most annoying bug is how this game hitches up once or twice every minute. As in literally pausing for a second and then abruptly restarting the action. The problem is that the action doesn't actually get paused in this moment. It's more that time was running without you. This has a bad habit of breaking up the momentum of fights and making some of the platforming much more difficult than it should be. This issue is especially annoying because the rest of the animation is otherwise flawless. The truth is, the crashing, boring combat, and constant hitching make some of the other issues seem almost pointless. That said, I do think it's worth mentioning that starting at the same place after every death makes the structure feel more repetitive than it needs to be. I also thought that a lot of the level designs were boring. It's a lot of industrial settings where the only difference is the color. I also wish the developers of this style of Metroidvania action game would come up with more original abilities. I know the double jump is a classic, but it would have been nice to see more creativity in the gameplay. This is probably a good time to remind you that I genuinely liked Sundered. There are definitely elements I don't like and design decisions that baffle me, but I was riveted by this world and in love with the graphics. This is a game that controls well, is full of surprises, and features a few of the best boss fights of the year. It's so good in so many ways, which is why all the bad stuff stands out so prominently. This is a great action game buried beneath boring combat and rampant technical problems. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So here's the question of the day. What's the ultimate Metroidvania game? Obviously, it doesn't have to come from the Castlevania or Metroid franchises, but I have a hunch that a lot of people are going to say Symphony of the Night and Super Metroid. Let me know in the comments below. So even though this is the sixth review of the week, I think I'm going to be able to fit in a seventh with a leaving Lindo. Expect my thoughts on that later today. I also have a big stack of games to review for next week, so I recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.